Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for joining us, broadcasting to you guys from the DCF studio here on the south side of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! Ooh, that music gets me pumped up every single time. Boy, does it feel good to be back. Let's go ahead, hop here in the chat. Make sure you guys can hear me. Make sure you guys can see me. 81 people already watching. Thank you guys for joining us. Another beautiful Friday. Let me know if you guys can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. And let me know if you guys are ready to do the dang thing. Thank you guys. Let's see. Yep, saying you guys can hear me. Everything looks good. Looks good. Awesome stuff. So, yeah, another, uh, another busy week here in the studio. We had a uh, video on filming yourself this week. That was pretty cool. That was uh, that was uh, one of Jason's ideas, just based off of so many people constantly ask us, "Hey, uh, what equipment do you use? How do you get those overhead shots? How do you film these angles, those angles, that angle, that angle over there?" And we thought we would run through some of the equipment and uh, some of it, some stuff that you guys might not have uh, seen before. And one thing that we're always preaching, specifically here on the lives, is you know, creating as much content around every single project that you're doing, and that's going to require uh, equipment. That's going to require you to film yourself, and, and how do you do any better? You might not know what equipment to uh, do so with, and, you know, sometimes we see some stuff, and it, it just, uh, the the thought is there, you know, it's just uh, need a little bit more execution as far as, you know, framing and, and angles and all that type of stuff, and that's stuff that you uh, learn over time. But, wow, 100 plus people already in the chat. Thank you, guys. Uh, we are going to have a good time today. Loud and clear. Yep. Awesome stuff. Camera is a little laggy. Hopefully not. Hopefully uh, it's catching up. Hopefully it's just the stream, the internet, and uh, all that will be good to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have some questions about Angela's paint. Everything is sold out. Do you know when it will be restocked again? So I talked with them recently. That should hopefully be soon. Yeah, they are low on everything. Uh, a lot of the paints are only is four times the quantity of paint because a pint is 16 ounces, but it's double the price. So you pay double the price, but you get four times the paint. So you start to notice though, those numbers will matter if you're trying to grow your business and, you know, profit margins and all those types of things start to matter. So of course, as you can, it's going to be a better idea to buy pints and quarts and, um, gallons even. Now, um, uh, a lot of you guys are saying lagging. Uh, let's see. Let me see. I have an error on YouTube. So it's saying YouTube will experience buffering. Let me check what internet connection we are on. So I'm going to switch uh, my Wi-Fi, and we will see how that does. So the first couple minutes here, we'll just be uh, seeing if we can get a good connection for you guys. So right now, mine says I am offline, but again, we're just going to um, see if we can get a, a strong connection here. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Now it says that we have a good connection. I have about a 25 second delay um, from reading the chat, so I'm going to let everything kind of load here. So let's see if this does, um, let's see if that'll do, uh, let's see if that will make a difference. I'm seeing good connection. Okay, I'm going to uh, move forward and assume that this looks good. Let's assume this looks good. Okay. Uh, let's see, let me see that Supreme go to, okay. So, uh, Supreme go to with the question that, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily feel comfortable answering this question of, can you give me a ballpark of your yearly income? But you know, one thing that I think, um, people are always wondering about is, um, can you make, you know, can you make a great living customizing shoes and, you know, a, a round number, uh, a whole number that a lot of people will say, is can you make $100,000 doing this? Well, to make $100,000 in a year, you need to make about $275 a day. 
Um, can you make $275 a day painting shoes? Yes. Is that easy? No. Um, is that doable? Absolutely. Uh, there's, I think that if you're going to do it, you're going to want other, you know, you'll, you'll hear this from any, any millionaire's story that you want different streams of revenue also. So try to think of different streams of revenue that you can have, um, in the customizing world. How can you make money outside of just customizing shoes. Sometimes that could be an option of, of getting, um, you know, having a product that you sell, whether that be somebody, you know, like a Raleigh Restorations who has scratch resistant sealer and soul sauce and all this type of stuff and uh, that, uh, have tutorials that are for sale. Like um, I know Wavy Kick Fits, who does incredible metallic work. He sells some of his tutorials rather than posting them directly to YouTube. Um, you know, maybe you want to sell, you know, like I said, maybe you create a product that you sell, whether it be little dubrays or laces or insoles, something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, ways to make income outside of just customizing shoes, because at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're not necessarily machines. There's only, only so many shoes that you can uh, paint in a year. So that's just something to consider as far as, um, if you want to, um, um, you know, try to make a, a thing doing this. Is it possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, let's see. There was, uh, before I hop in the chat, there was a cool thing that I saw. I posted on my Instagram story earlier. I want to, uh, share it with you guys because, uh, just something that, you know, I think, I think you guys will really enjoy. I, I took, uh, I took, I took away something from it. So let me pull that up. Let us see here. Okay, let's uh, let's flip over here. Cool. Uh, I'm trying to remember who, uh, the artist Vex, a, another great YouTuber. I saw him share this on his story. So it's a quick little, um, like a 10, uh, 10 page uh, little little sketch, kind of almost like a comic type deal. So this first one, uh, I'll, I'll zoom in a little so we can all read it. It says, so you want to be an artist. Wait, what's wrong? Oh, I see. This artist draws better than you. This one is faster than you. This one has more followers than you. Hey, it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. You don't have to be the strongest artist in the world to become the best artist you can be. You just need to give it your best shot and you need to do it now. Nobody will tell you here is a load of cash. Go do your thing. You will develop the skills you need to create your path. Got it? So get to it now. And I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really interesting because... Um, Boy, oh boy, comparison syndrome, it, it, it's real, guys. It is so easy to look at other artists and so easy to look at uh, anybody else and say, man, they're, they're doing so much better than me. That artist has more followers. That artist is making more money. That artist is better than me. All you can do is try to improve that person in the mirror. You know what I mean? That's really all you can do. It, nothing is going to happen overnight that you're just going to be, hey, I want more followers than that person. That doesn't that doesn't happen overnight. Hey, I want to be a better artist than that person. I want to be better at, uh, at portrait work than that person. It does not happen overnight. So you need to, like I said, you just battle with that person in the mirror and, and get after it and challenge yourself. And uh, we'll have a video on that topic coming up real soon. It's something that I've hinted at, you know, maybe in live stream and something I've talked about on uh couple Instagram lives recently and whatnot, a video that I'm really excited about. Um, the, yeah, this video, I'm not sure if it's going to be next week or the week after, but it's a video that I think hopefully um, just just the passion I have for this will, uh, will really bleed through. So making sure we get this video right uh, really matters a lot to me. So I'm excited. And um, uh, let's see. Also, next week, if everything goes well, I want to I wanna say it in the chat here first. If everything goes well, we will be having um, our first YouTube live stream where we paint an entire shoe during a stream. So uh, I talked about this many months back and we never found the time to get around to it. And next week, I think we should be able to, most likely Wednesday, we'll see, maybe Tuesday, maybe Thursday, one of those middle days of the week, we should be doing a live stream that's probably going to be about 10 hours of painting a shoe from start to finish. It's going to be a Jordan 1, and um, likely we'll have to start early, you know, probably 8 o'clock, time, 
and you know go till about six o'clock and uh, ideally what we're gonna do is um, you know we've considered uh, we we really wanted to have you know maybe a, a multiple and uh, you know have those different viewing angles it's but that's really hard to do um, honestly one of the hardest reasons to do it is because you need that's not too distracting uh, my neighbor behind me is cutting their grass so hopefully you guys can still hear me but um, one thing that we really wanted to do was essentially have like a two camera setup where we have this camera facing me and then we could have another camera, you know, kind of over my shoulder showing what I'm doing. But that's really hard to do. It just requires a lot of a stream from two cameras and a lot of stuff. So um, essentially it'll be the one camera and uh, Jason will just be moving around the camera. Sometimes it'll be here, uh, you know, this front view and sometimes it will be... Uh, you know over the over the shoulder be more important that we're trying to show a certain detail and I'm not a great multitasker So it'll be pretty hard for me It's not going to be like this where I'm answering questions the entire day because when I'm focused on painting It's uh, I'm not a, I'm not a good multitasker at all Jason will even tell you sometimes when and I'm really into something It's hard for me to even like carry conversation with him So uh, Jason will be hanging out. He'll be uh, you know kind of uh, monitoring the chat We'll be answering questions along the way. The goal, of course, what I'll be talking about the entire time is the process, specifically why I'm doing something, you know, the certain order of stuff. So it'll be a lot of that, and I'll, I'll typically be answering a lot of the questions that may be pertaining to the subject at hand, rather than kind of outside Q&A type questions that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing in a stream like this. So, yeah, but uh, I'm really excited about that. That should be a, a great time. Um, like I said, there's there's like a 90% chance as of right now that that will be one of the days next week. So we will see. Um, cleaned up a pair of dirty custom sneakers. Does the paint chip? I did sanding, scotch by pad, and acetone prep, by the way. No, so uh, I, I wouldn't recommend using... Um, a you know like a hard bristle brush i would just use you know soap and a washcloth or something like that you'll be able to clean them pretty good um and if you are going to use a, a brush you want to use a a soft bristle brush so that's what i would use so yeah uh let's see uh rafael says please read i live in south africa and we don't have angeles paint or specific shoe finishers what others or mix to get it for shoes as well as finishers so if you can't get your whole if you can't get your hands on Angelus, I would um, uh, try again, first off, see if there's another store outside of just Angelus Direct that will ship to South Africa. Of course, I don't know, um, you know if it's just not possible to get it through customs. If not, maybe you can get Jacquard paint uh, uh, through customs there, and Jacquard paint is great stuff, you know, airbrush ready. Other than that, outside of those two, there's not really anything else that I would uh, truly, truly, truly recommend. So, uh, so yes, let's see. Um, let us see here. Some good questions in the chat. Mm -mm. Some people saying Tuesday. Yeah, we will see. We will see. Uh, Oscar Marino says, do you use Angelus water and stain repellent or just the finisher will do? I believe just the finisher will do. I don't believe you need the water and stain repellent also, but it's kind of one of those things that, uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess it wouldn't hurt per se, but I don't think it's uh, particularly. So let's see. Uh, uh, Madison Mary Design Co. says, what would be your best advice for beginners starting out and did friends and family already? Yeah, so, you know, that's certainly going to be my advice at first and, uh, you know, doing as many friends and family as possible. And then from there, hopefully they're willing to promote your work. Hopefully, you know, now that you've done a bunch of friends and family, you have quite a nice catalog or portfolio of all the designs that you've done and you're ready to post those to Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, Craigslist, eBay, Twitter, and you post your stuff everywhere. And then, uh, you know, hopefully some clientele will start to come in. So that is, uh, that is my recommendation. Uh, let's see.
Uh, Elijah Rivera says best way to clean paintbrushes. One way that uh, I'm not I'm not the best person to ask uh, clean paintbrushes because I'm not somebody who takes great care of my paintbrushes. But one thing that really does help if you need to is boiling water. And then I think some people also might use vinegar in there. But the boiling water uh, trick has definitely uh, worked for me in the past. Yes. Uh, Anna says, what if I don't have any friends or family that have shoes for me to try on? I would uh, convince them. Convince. Say, hey, you know, I'm trying to do this. I need your guys' support. I need shoes to practice on. And uh, if that doesn't work, you know, head to thrift stores. Try to buy old used shoes. Head to eBay. Try to buy old used shoes. And, you know, you just need to find canvases to work on when you're starting out. So, but... Uh, but I would I would continue to try to work on your friends and family. Try to really get them to uh, convince them to come around for you. Absolutely. Uh, Preston Stubbs says, I'm really trying to grow my YouTube channel. How should I go about getting it bigger? Consistency is going to be the biggest thing on YouTube. Um, you know, potentially consider uh, doing things that can really help you gain subscribers. Like, you know, maybe host a giveaway or something like that. Uh, borrow, borrow content ideas from other genres and things like that. So, you know, look up, find out what's trending on YouTube at any given time, because the trending videos on YouTube today are not the same as they were five years ago. You know what I mean? So you have to stay up on the trends on any platform you are trying to grow. So, yeah. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Kaz says, is it okay to use duller for painting on canvas? The paint looks a little too shiny for my liking right now. Absolutely. So anytime you're working on canvas, prime knit, mesh, any type of softer material, I absolutely recommend that you use duller specifically in those cases because if you look at mesh, if you look at prime knit, any type of softer material, there's never going to be a sheen to it, okay? there, It's never going to be glossy. Whereas if you look at, you know, a factory shoe, like a leather Air Force One, there is a little bit of a sheen to this, okay? Now, everything here is going to be a little too white and blown out because of the bright lights, but there is a little bit of a sheen to leather. So, but that's not there if we're looking at an all-white Roche or an all-white Easy or something like that, an all-white pair of Vans, Skate Highs. There is no sheen to the material. So when you're painting it, the Angelus paints have a little bit of a natural sheen to them, along with uh, sodas too thin and um, too soft. Those additives, they have a little bit of a sheen to them. And if you know, you're know you using them in a large quantity, like a one-to-one -one ratio, that's going to up the sheen to the mixture. So that's when you know, you're definitely going to want to use some duller. So yes... Uh, my man Rupsy says, do you guys eat burritos in the studio? Of course, man. Chicago has some great Mexican food when you're able to uh, make your way over here. Absolutely. That, that'll that that'll have to be one of the... Uh, that'll have to... Well, we'll see, man. If we're talking about staple Chicago food, I, I don't know that, you know, uh, Mexican food is going to be one of the first ones that we'll have to have, you know, like deep dish pizza and uh, stuff like that. So, uh, let's see. Uh, John Becker says, when painting Air Force One's metal lace holder, do you acetone first or just use an adhesion promoter? So we are talking about a Dubre. Uh, those are called Dubrays, those little lace holders that are at the bottom lace of an Air Force One. Since they're metal, to be 100% honest with you, I don't recommend painting them. Uh, it's not something that's going to hold up. If, if uh, you know, you might be able to find somebody who does custom ones or something like that. Maybe you wanted to have your logo or, or something like that. But if you're just trying to paint the one that comes with the Air Force Ones, I don't think it's going to hold up long term. However, it's not necessarily going to move a lot. It's not going to go through a lot of, uh, you know, flexing or anything like that. So if, if I if I had one of them and had to paint it, I would sand it, I would scuff it, and then I would paint it with Too Hard also. And that would probably do pretty decent. And, you know, the more I think about it, it's never going to move really. So... Um, it, it, it might be okay, but I don't think it's going to, you know, be the, uh, most durable type thing. So, yeah. Uh, Aalia says, what shoe has been the most challenging to customize? So I'll be showing that off in an upcoming video. I now have the shoe that has taken me the longest time ever to paint this pair. Uh, I'm going to have to, I don't want to just throw out a number uh, on, on hours because I need to actually think about it a little bit more about how long it actually took, but it took me two weeks to do, uh, this pair of shoes that we'll be showing off real soon. So, 
Yes, uh, I'm excited for you guys to see that one. Uh, Geeky Acrylic says, if I'm wanting to thin some paint for flicking some blood splatter, would I use something like Too Thin? Yeah, Too Thin, if you really want that super tiny blood splatter, that's when you're going to want to thin it out with uh, some Too Thin. And if you're going for those thicker uh, splatters, that's when you want to let your paint sit out a little bit because you want it to thicken up a little bit. And uh, that's when you're going to do kind of that violent whipping. And that's when you might get, uh, you know, some of those thicker blotches of blood. So, yeah, um, if you want a wide range of variation in splatter, uh, one way to do that would have a nice wide range of variance in the, the uh, um, how thin and how thick your paint is. So, yeah, that, that is good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Uh, G Custom says, I'm in a creative block and I need help. Sometimes you just need to, uh, you need to step away a little bit. Sometimes, you know, uh, as creatives, we get writer's block. We get tunnel vision. I know that happens to me sometimes when you're just staring at a project too long. And, and sometimes, you know, it might be a matter of you not being able to come up with ideas. So you just need to get inspired again. You know what I mean? And, and what I'll always say works for me is, you know, when I'm in a run, I need to do some, one thing that I like to do is just look at, look at people that inspire me in the, uh, you know, some sneaker space. So look at some of the artists that I really uh, look up to and I enjoy their work and, and see what they're doing and see how they might tackle a project. Like, you know, let, let's just say, for example, I have a Joker themed shoe. Okay. This is a really old pair. This is probably from about 2016. Um, and so what it's really missing, I, I still like these, but what it's really missing is it needs more white. Uh, during, for a couple year stretch, I was really into packing as much purple as possible into my Joker themes. And I realized, so I have a pair of, I did a, we have a Joker cleats video on YouTube. And I like that aesthetic a whole lot more because I have a lot more white packed into the design. So what this is missing, it's cool. It's just missing more white. And, um... So, yeah, let's say you have a Joker theme, for example. Take a look at how some of your favorite artists might do a Joker theme, you know, because there's, there's so many different ways you could do it and, and draw inspiration from that. I really like how they did that. I really like, you know, maybe that somebody did the shoe in, you know, 90% of it's white and then the purple, the green, and the red are just tiny little, uh, you know, tiny little hits here and there throughout. So... That's certainly something you could do. I always say, you know, find find another art form that inspires you, whether that be photography, tattoo art, movies, television, whatever it may be. You know, sometimes maybe you got to read a book or something like that. It could be anything to get inspiration. You know what I mean? You, you, sometimes you get the question as an artist of, you know, where do you draw all of your inspiration from? What inspires you? And, and sometimes you'll hear people say, oh, I'm inspired by my city or something like that. That's where I get my inspiration and my style from and other things. So uh, a lot of different ways that, you know, you could you could go about um, getting inspiration again. But sometimes you just got to step away and, and look up great art. That's the best recommendation that I can have is is look up great art and great artists. That's, that's truly what I would do um, if that ever happens to me. Custom Queen coming in hot with the super chat. Thank you so much. She says the beard is back. The beard is back. I shaved it, uh, uh, shaved, shaved the head and everything. That was, um, it was uh, the weekend, the day that we were supposed to have the DCF experience. So I know that Monday was 420 and the weekend was 418 and 419. So yeah, it's been a whole month. Beard is back. Um, hair is starting to come back a little bit. Not long enough for me to do the typical comb over still. So we've probably got a, a couple more weeks for that to really be back. But yeah, thankfully, you know, I'm a guy. So so it grows back quickly. So uh, let's see here. Uh, Flywalker Kick says, how many times should I post pictures of the same custom on Instagram? I think that that is uh, totally um, somewhat hard to answer, but... Don't post the same picture. You know what I mean? Uh, switch it up. You know, let's say you have a Joker themed shoe like this. What's, let's take what's right in front of me. Say, I'm going to go get a couple main shots. I'm going to find a proper setting for the Joker. So when I think of the Joker, I think of, 
you know, if we talk about the dark nightmare, I think of dark, gritty in the streets, um, you know, potentially even nighttime. So try to get some cool pictures of that. Maybe you want to post some cool detail pictures, some close ups, and maybe you want to create some video animations, things like that. So um, you don't necessarily have to set yourself a number unless you have the type of grid on Instagram that, you know, sort of locks you into a certain type of thing. But but get as much out of it as possible and don't think you have to post it all in a row either. You know what I mean? Let's say you have, let's say in a month you do five projects total, you know, post, uh, you know, switch it up a main post from project number one, then do an animation from project number two, then do a close up from project number three, then do a main shot from project number four animation from number five. And then, you know, start to start over. Now I'm going to post an animation from um, uh, project number one after I've already posted a bunch of other content in between. So that's something that you could do. So it's all about finding ways to never run out of content, essentially. And that's what we wanted uh, somewhat to be the topic of this week's YouTube video, where we talked about filming yourself. And this way you can have time lapses and, and, and things like that to uh, to show. So uh, as I watch here on the iPad, guys, I keep seeing uh, a lot of lag here and there. Let me know if the stream is lagging a lot for you guys uh, more than usual. I didn't necessarily do anything different today, but let me know if uh, for whatever reason that may be. Uh, Nick Kessler says, how many bloopers did you have shooting the Marco video? There was a lot of bloopers. Um... That was a fun video to make, and, and I'm, also, I'm so glad that Marco was such a, a great sport about it. We had the idea of, we've always wanted to collab with him, and we've gone back and forth on a few ideas, He's dude, but it seemed like until we, the, the way the conversations went, it sort of seemed like until we really presented the main idea and actually went about doing something to make it happen that it wasn't going to go anywhere. And sometimes that happens in life. You know, you might be talking about a collab with somebody, but until you say, you know, conver con the conversation might go, well, what do you think we should do? Oh, it'd be cool if we do this. But sometimes you can really lead a conversation if you actually take the initiative to really put something out there. So we decided to film the entire video and edit, have it completely done. And then we sent it to him and said, hey, it'd be awesome if we could add your reaction to the end of the video. And he loved it. He said this was, he, he was cracking up, he said, the entire time watching it. So um, that was awesome. Um, even if he d even if he didn't respond to our, uh, us sending him the video, we were still going to post the video. The icing on the cake that we got his reaction from it. But we knew that even if we didn't get any reaction from him, we still had a uh, cool video. So that was a fun one. A fun one. Uh, let's see here, da, da, da. Step ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. After sanding prep, my stitching gets frayed. How do I make sure the paint doesn't look caked on the stitching? So with the stitching, there's two things that you can do that work really well. You can run a lighter uh, right by the stitching. You're not going to burn your shoes. Just don't hold it there too long, of course. Another thing you could do that works even better is get a nose hair trimmer. You can pick them up on Amazon for probably 10 to 13 bucks if you don't already have one. And you run that right along the stitching and it cleans up all that little, all those little frays real quickly. So, yep. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Uh, SJ Design, this is an interesting one. Really important question. Have you ever met religious people who can't draw popular themes like magic or things they don't agree with and how they solve that problem? I can't say that I, uh, personally, I have not uh, run into that issue. I think certainly, uh, you know, uh, there there is obviously certain themes that I wouldn't do if somebody, you know, wanted to do somebody wanted to do like a hate crime type theme or something like that. But you know, that that's, I just would say that, you know, I don't have any interest in taking on that theme, but you know, for, uh, you know, religion, there's something you can't do. Uh, at least in your example, you said magic. Um, and if you're, if, if your religious beliefs, you don't believe in magic, 
or that's not a theme that you want to take on, I think just transparency with your client. Hey, this is, you're looking to get a shoe from me. Your name is SJ Design. So when a client reaches out to you, they want an SJ Design shoe. So if you're purchasing something from me, if you're trusting in me as a person, you want a pair from me as the artist, it's going to be it's gonna be me, it's gonna come from me and my belief system, and that's not uh, a part of my belief system. So I would, uh, you know, just transparency with your clients. That's what I would be all about. So yes, uh, JP Dick says, I've been told that I should be more active on my page and post weekly, but I can't do customs weekly due to finances. What else can I post on Instagram? In that case, let's say you're doing one pair of custom shoes a month. You need to find a way to make 10 posts out of that uh, one project that you do an entire month. So you can post once every three days. You know, like I said, you could do uh, multiple different photos. You could do different videos, time lapses. You could do different animations. There's so many things you could do. There's so many ways you can get content, but you need to film yourself while you're painting and doing then can build content out of those videos. So never let um, things like that stop you from having enough content. You should never run out of content is something that I'll always uh, preach. Uh, Roman says, can I use Photoshop on iPad Pro to create a multi-level stencil and what do you use to get clear audio for voiceovers in your audio? Uh, voiceovers in your videos. Thanks, man. Uh, Roman, great question. Can I use Photoshop on iPad Pro to create a multi-level stencil? Um, you should be able to. Photoshop on the iPad is not fully there yet. It's getting better. The initial one was not that good. It's getting better and it's going to get better and it's going to be pretty darn close to what you can do on a desktop eventually. I don't know if it's there yet. I'm very comfortable on the computer. So if I'm going to be doing a stencil, I would do it on the computer personally because that Photoshop has more capability than what's on the iPad. But you should be able to, especially uh, to create a multi-layer stencil, you only need to do so many things like you know, the threshold and all that stuff we talked about in our video. So you should be able to do that. And uh, so I, I would say, yes, you should be able to. And then what do you use your audio for your voiceover to get, sorry, what do you use to get clear audio for voiceovers in your videos? We use a Rode VideoMic Pro that is right here. Um, if I tilt it back. So I just have that right above me. It's right out of frame. This is a Rode VideoMic Pro. This is probably considered one of the most popular um, mics that are used uh, specifically for vlogging and things like that. And then in situations like this where we do, um, you know, the DCF Live here, I just have it on a mic stand. You could set it up on the camera, but the camera is further away than the mic stand. And to get clear audio, you always want the mic as close to you as possible. So that's what we use. I think that mic is around $200, but it is it is top. It is really good stuff. And it's, a, and it's also, that is good stuff. Uh, let's see. The Marco vid was spot on. Yeah, the, uh, the response to the Marco video was phenomenal. Like, absolutely phenomenal. Um, the, 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 out, the, everybody got it. You know what I mean? It, it was, it was a spoof. It was a Saturday Night Live skit. You know what I mean? It was just, it was, let's try, let's, you get it right away. You know what I mean? From the jump cuts to the, my favorite part is the, was the cinematic portion where it just goes to the music. And we, we made sure to lot, to watch a lot of Marco videos to understand what are his typical transitions and things like that. So yeah, that was my favorite part. So that was a fun video to make. And, uh, we had a lot of fun with that one, but what's really funny is I posted that cinematic to TikTok. And um, it's now our most viewed video on TikTok, which is funny. And because, um, you know, the the people on TikTok are, are most of the time, the way TikTok works for anybody who's not on it is you just see new people stuff on your feed all the time. Even people you don't follow, you just see new people. So anybody you're seeing their video, it's almost like you're seeing them for the first time. So I think the video has nearly 200,000 views on TikTok now, and it's just the cinematic portion from that YouTube video where it's just the painting of the shoe to the music. And it's so funny because, you know, it's it's not like you people who watch us here on YouTube and support us and know us and, and know that it was a spoof, know that it was a fun joke, know that it, it wasn't meant to be like, 
wow, you're you're a copier, you stole something from this guy. It was it was meant to be that. But everybody on TikTok is like tagging Marco and, and trying to let him know that somebody copied him and all this stuff. So the the keyboard warriors came out on TikTok for that. So that was funny. So just the reaction. But of course, like it's uh, it, that's awesome for him that somebody can do a cinematic, a sequence of music and painting of shoes. And right away, people think of Marco, like that dude is doing his job. That dude is doing something right, that that people can spot uh, something like that from him right away. So that is super cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Noah says, I'm painting a Jordan 6. I sanded it, acetoned it, and all the proper prep. But the four-layered base paint is still getting stripped by the vinyl. Does doing heat setting as well, but nothing is working. Any tips? So, Noah, let me know what vinyl you're using because that potentially could be the issue. Um, that might be the issue that, you know, maybe the vinyl you're using is more of a permanent vinyl. Um, so let me know what vinyl you're using, Noah. Otherwise, it could be a matter of maybe you painted a little bit too thick, so the paint isn't bonded because, you know, the, the paint's just on there too thick. Maybe you didn't give enough dry time between layers, even with the heat setting. You still want to give it about 20 minutes or so between, uh, layers. So it could be, it could be a couple different things there. Uh, let's see. Uh, JPJ Custom Kick says, people complain about me applying my logo to my customs. What is your opinion on that? Should I add it or not? To be 100% honest with you, I have painted, um, let's say, I'm just going to say a, a, a at a minimum, if I've been doing this seven years, seven times 365, I've done a lot more than this, but that's 2,500. So I would say I've probably painted three or 4,000 pairs of shoes. Uh, there's only one of them that have, um, my logo on there and they're for my dad <laughs> because he wanted a pair with the logo on it. Um, but that's cause he's my dad and, um, shout out to my dad who I know is watching Papa De Jesus. Um, yeah, I, I don't pu put my logo on the shoes. Um, some people do, I'm trying to, um, express why I don't do it. I suppose I don't necessarily find it necessary. I would rather let my artwork speak for itself. I think that's uh, the number one reason. And um, at the end of the day, also another reason why I don't is because it's not my own shoe. Like the logo on the shoe is is right here. You know what I mean? The, the Nike swoosh, that's the logo. So maybe if I had my own shoe, I would want my logo on there somewhere. But um, yeah. I, um, I don't do it. Um, I know, I'm trying to think of who does that a lot. I, like, I know Souls by Sir puts his, uh, he has a silhouette of his face. He puts that on almost every pair of shoes, which is, uh, you know, obviously there's reasons why that's really smart because now when, um, all of these NFL photographers are, um, taking pictures of cleats, there's a good chance you're going to see his logo, which is great for business, of course, but I personally don't find it necessary. You, if people are telling you um, customers are not liking it, then I would say, uh, you know, maybe consider putting it in a tinier spot. A little more could be uh, a way to go about it. You know, maybe it's in a, a smaller little area of the shoe or something like that. So, yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, Samuel Sanchez, should I strain and add too thin or just straining is good? You, uh, a hundred percent straining is more important than adding too thin, but you, uh, most likely will still want to add too thin. Maybe if you have a brand new bottle of Angelus and it's already super thin, you may not need to add any too thin. Personally, I'm still going to, there's never a time I'm not going to add too thin because I want it to run really cleanly through my airbrush. It's not like the too thin is breaking down the strength of the paint and the paint isn't going to bond to the shoe as well. So I'm going to still add a little bit of too thin personally. Uh, Richie Williams says, how do you go about matching a color you want? Like a cartoon character. So Richie, the thing that really helps me, let's say I'm trying to do, you know, a Bart Simpson yellow. What I like to do is load up the image of the cartoon in something like uh, Procreate 
or Photoshop, whether it be on your iPad or your computer, and use the color picker. Now what the color picker is gonna do is it's gonna show you where that color falls uh, amongst all the other values. So, you know, it's a it's a darker yellow or it's a lighter yellow or it's a little bit more towards orange. So it just really helps you start to visualize, okay, that's a nice yellow, but clearly it's it's getting pretty close to the orange family and things like that. So pulling up a color picker digitally is what I recommend and that'll really help you uh, better start to visualize um, what you need your color to be. Let's see. Uh, Beckham Custom says the mic is 250. Gotcha. Okay. It's a good mic. It's a good mic. Um, outside, unless you need to buy a, uh, a boom mic or a podcasting mic where you, mo you might want one of those like $600 Shure SM7B mics, um, this, is, this is one of the best ones you can get. Uh, Slammer390 says, what is your favorite brand of sneakers like Nike or Under Armour? Uh, Nikes and Jordans would be my favorite for sure. Uh, D-Mail says, have you painted the lace tabs on Jordan 4s? How does it hold up? It's definitely something I've done in the past. If you have if you scroll really far down on our Instagram, you'll see us painting on Jordan 4 tabs and things like that. I haven't done it in many years because at this point, I really try to avoid painting anything that I can't say with absolute certainty is going to hold up. So if you're going to do them, that is an area where I would use something like Angelus Too Hard, but I would also still be uh, sanding and scuffing it. So, uh, let's, uh, Kaz says, does anyone have experience with affinity photo and affinity designer? Is it good enough for making shoe mock-ups? Not a Adobe CC. Um, my buddy Repsy, a moderator here in the chat, uh, check him out. If you're not familiar with him, he is Repsy Banks on Instagram. He uses affinity, oh, great friend of mine and incredibly talented, and he uses those. So you can absolutely, uh, do that. Uh, Oscar Marino says, how would you describe your style? Like Serato has that colorful galaxy. Marco has the black outlines. That is a phenomenal question, Oscar. And uh, I think that is a great balance. And uh, it's kind of a never ending battle because one thing that I think is great is that those artists do have a signature style that you can recommend. But something I also absolutely pride myself on is um, I want to be able to tackle any style, any theme, whatever it is. So, you know, if you want portrait work, I want to be able to do that. If you want loud, colorful galaxy work, I want to be able to do that. If you want sketchy cartoon style, like the pair we did in the Marco video, I want to be able to do that. If you want a superhero theme, I want to be able to do that. But when I have my choice to do my theme, I like to do a lot of texture. I like to do a lot of gradients. And I like to do classic clean color blocking also. I love keeping the essence of some classic Jordan um, color blocking, things like that. So, for example, let me let me grab something. I don't want to show the other shoe, but I can show this one. So this is a, this is a Kobe pair that runs so on one of the shoes. We just have the Mamba logo, and I have a white fade. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's really bright because of the lighting, but. What you can see here is I have, essentially this started off as an all yellow to white fade and the white fade this little toe box panel, but the purple is done in areas, you know, like the swoosh, this upper heel panel, and this tiny little panel right here. So what I love about this is taking away from the fade, if you just look at this, this is classic Jordan color blocking. There's plenty of Jordan models that you can picture that have color blocking just like this, whether it be black and red or black and blue or black and white, whatever it is, this is something you've definitely seen before. So when I have a theme, like a Lakers or Kobe theme, first start off with, I'm working on a Jordan 1. Well, what's the essence of a Jordan 1? What are some classic color blocking schemes from a Jordan 1? And then you wouldn't necessarily see a Jordan 1 with a fade like this, but that's adding my own artistic style and then doing all of the, uh, these other elements. Like I have the big Mamba logo here on this one, and then I have a big Kobe portrait on the other. So... I think my style is is uh, is uh, I want to just be able to handle anything that uh, gets thrown my way. That is uh, something I take pride in, and um, yeah, I, hopefully I I don't want to I, I I sort of somewhat like to be a jack of all trades, master of none. I think that that is uh, sort of a category that 
I, w- I would like to be considered that I can I can handle anything. If you need, you guys have seen me do the the classic, uh, um, you know, hype LV. I can do the Gucci stuff also, and I can do you know when people give me full on creative freedom, I love that too. And um, typically, I, I think that a lot of my stuff is uh, colorful and bold and loud also. So. Yeah, that is uh, that is how I would de- uh, describe my style. Yep, let's see here. Anna says, "Would you say that putting your videos on YouTube when you first start is okay?" Absolute thing is just starting. Just starting. Uh, uh, Noah following up about the vinyl says I'm using Oracle 651 vinyl last roll. I never had the problem. So, you know, you, there's a chance that you might just be working on, um, a tough pair of Jordan sixes. Something could be up with the leather. They might be a little bit different. You say that you've used this before. I always run Oracle 811. It's a little bit less uh, of a strong adhesive than, uh, Oracle 651. So maybe consider that. But there also could just be the chance that they didn't get prepped enough. It might be a, um, some really shitty leather. It could be really cheap leather. And sometimes with, with bad leather, it comes on a lot of these shoes. To be honest with you guys, they just require more prep work for, for paint to actually bond to them. So. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, Jermaine says, what would you suggest for a first airbrush? I recommend the Badger Patriot 105. That is my go-to. Uh, CW Custom says, uh, your favorite shoe of all time. Chaos Custom says, favorite Jordan, my favorite shoe, and my favorite Jordan of all time is going to be the Black Cement Jordan 3. That is one of the most beautiful looking shoes I have ever seen. I love how it looked great on the basketball court, and then it also uh, translated onto the streets. Also, I mean, you can you can dress it up, dress it down. I love a good uh, I love a good Jordan three. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kaz says, "Are you going to take the shoe surgeons course once things are safe again?" That is something that I would absolutely love to do. I would love to do that. Uh, let's see. Curtis says, uh, Curtis Liam O'Neill says, I know you don't use Posca, but do you think I would need to, to out did white Posca first for black shoes? Um, that probably says, so I know you don't use Posca, but do you think I would need to, to out did white Posca first for black shoes? I may not fully, uh, get that question. Um, but, um, okay. So let me try to think of what you're saying. Um, black shoes, should you use white Posca first? I, I, I'm not that familiar with the, with the, I, I guess I haven't used, I've used the Posca pens, the markers, but I haven't used them on a black, it depends on the material, but the, the, the paint lays on relatively thick with them. So, um, I, I who am I to give advice on something? I, I don't like giving advice on things that I don't do or I don't use or I don't recommend. So. That's a a, uh, a really hard question for me to to answer. So I I, I don't like um, um, I don't like answering questions that I don't uh, recommend. You know, like here, how do I paint um, a midsole on a on a Air Force One? You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to recommend something that I don't uh, do. So, um, but I I don't want to you know certainly not trying to ignore your question either, but. Do you think I would need to put white post first for black shoes? Probably, probably. If you're trying to get a color to pop on something on there, yeah, you would want to. Uh, Dan V says, how would you theme a lumberjack Air Force One? I was thinking some similar pattern to your shirt, red and adding symbols of hatchets. That is pretty cool. So if we just looked at an Air Force One and you were talking about uh, you know, doing a lumberjack pattern, how would you go about doing it? Um, there are some cool ways that you could do that. One of the first ways that popped in my head that I would consider is maybe you do the plaid pattern on like the toe box 
and then the medial panel right behind the swoosh. That could be pretty cool. And then some of these other panels, like the panel that wraps around the toe box, the eyelet panel, maybe those are more solid colors. That might be really cool. Or other ways you could do it, um, since plaid would certainly be hard to paint, maybe it's, it's minimal. So maybe it's just on an area like the swoosh and all the other uh, panels are different solid colors from within that uh, plaid pattern. That could be a really cool way to do it. And those are just two quick little, quick little hitter ideas that came to mind for something like that. Uh, Supreme Goto says, what transfer do you use again? Transfer paper do you use again? I use Green Star Lay Flat Classic. That's what I use. Uh, let's see. Uh, Beckham Custom says, is your next goal for customizing to be able to reconstruct a shoe and make it your own, like out of different materials, etc.? Um, yeah, absolutely. That is a, a goal of mine one day. I'm not sure that's the next goal, but yeah, um, one day isn't a day on the calendar, guys. So saying you're going to get around to, uh, doing something one day, um, is, is lying to yourself. So you need to actually decide when you're going to do that. So I would like to take the shoe surgeons course this year. I would love to do that. You know, hopefully things, um, we'll see as all the States open back up and, when we can even host our own course again, we'll see. Uh, hopefully everything, you know, we get good news from states opening up soon and things like that. So, um, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to do that. I would love to hopefully do that soon. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a, this is, this is a good one, guys. I think I've probably answered this one before, but this question comes in from, uh, hopefully I don't say this wrong. Stanislas, Stanislas, hopefully for short, we could just call you Stan, last name real. Do you send photos of the shoes to the customer when you finish them? That is a uh, great question because, um, something that can happen there is you run that risk of sending the photos to your clients of, um, you may have put in all the work and then they may want they may want to make changes so you may create a whole lot of uh more work for yourself you run that risk now of course you also run the risk of not sending photos of sending the product to them them opening them and them being unhappy that might happen um so to be honest i don't like to to send photos to uh my clients for 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 that reason of of that risk of them um, wanting to make changes. Now, of course, hopefully every single time that I send a photo to a client, they're going to be wowed rather than ask me to make changes, but you run that risk. You run that risk. Absolutely. And then sometimes when you work with, uh, media agencies and certain clients and things like that, it's, it's not an option. You have to send, whether it be progress photos or final products before, um, before they're ready to be sent off. And sometimes you might also, run your business a certain way where you, maybe you collect half the money up front and then the other half is given to you upon completion of the shoes. So you need to um, send them those finished pictures. So that is absolutely possible. Um, let me just double check in something here, making sure the stream is good. I saw a little error a second ago. Uh, so yeah, that is something that you definitely run the risk of with uh, sending progress photos. Uh, Alex Stone says, what's a trend you see a lot that you think is time to stop? Hopefully, uh, when a trend that, you know, trends are, are going to happen in anything, but of course they're going to, there's going to be waves in custom sneakers. Like when I first got in, I mean, we were painting, Gal we were painting South, the South beach theme on every shoe. We then, you know, when the galaxy foam posits came out, we were painting that on every shoe and, um, you know, uh, a trend now is, um, you know, we were painting the the cartoon sketch theme on every single shoe, and so so I don't think that those trends are bad because they they come in waves and whatnot. But hopefully, a, a trend that that um, I think is harmful is is painting things that aren't paintable and aren't going to hold up, like midsoles and uh, things like that. That's a that's a bad trend that hopefully is not around uh, forever, but it might be because there's you know people that. Um, believe that it's doable because you see things like scratch tests and things like that. But a finished picture doesn't mean a shoe is actually wearable. You know what I mean? So 
<laughs> Eric Juarez says, or you can have an uh, abuelita show you uh, show you like mine did. They are the best with those showing mach sewing machines. Yes, unfortunately, uh, my abuelita is not around to still uh, show me how to sew. Unfortunately, she had passed before I had got into doing uh, custom shoes, but that would have been uh, awesome. That the, absolutely, if you have somebody you can learn sewing from, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Um, Just Def says, Hey, De Jesus, I'm thinking about buying a vinyl cutter. I have no Photoshop experience. Will that make it harder for me to learn how to make stencils for my customs? Potentially. Now, um, you know, it depends what stencils you're going to be making, but sometimes you can find great images online where you can build stencils off of. But sometimes you need a little bit of Photoshop work to tweak the stencils to um, better to make them a little bit more detailed and get them exactly how you want. So um, your question was, will that make it harder for me to learn how to make stencils? Potentially. Can you still make stencils without any Photoshop experience? Yes, you can. But can it make your job harder? Yes, it can. That is a potential. Uh, let's see. Uh, CW Custom says, if you ever come to Portland, Dylan, I can uh, send you a Nike Employee Store Pass and you can get 40% off a variety of shoes, including Air Force Ones and Jordan Ones. That is awesome, man. That is awesome that you're able to uh, get that out there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Will says, do you have any ways to promote giveaways or do you have any ways to help create a website? So one thing that you might consider is getting a larger, pay larger page to potentially repost the giveaway. Um, it depends, you know, you might reach out to a page like Customizer Depot on Instagram, ask, hey, how much would it be for, you know, a, a, a post on the feed or, or a story post or something like that, something that will uh, promote the giveaway, things like that. So, yeah, I would look into potentially a, um, a, larger, a larger page, seeing if they'll promote the giveaway for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dwayne says, I bought a uh, Cricut Explorer Air 2 and just went at it. It's a little easier for first-time stencil makers. That's awesome. Yeah, people have uh, people have uh, good experiences with the with the Crickets. So that is, that's awesome that that uh, worked out good for you. Uh, Rav the Sev says, how many custom orders do you get in a month? Um, typically throughout most of the year, I'm going to say that we average uh, maybe a, a, a pair a day throughout the entire year. Now that's going to change greatly during during football season and things like that, and um, you know because that's when we'll be doing multiple pairs a day, somewhere between two to four pairs a day when it's crazy, uh, or more. And then um, you know, but now um, I'm at a point where I was able to take the last two weeks to do one pair because I really wanted them to be as uh, perfect as possible. And, um, yeah, so, you know, as you grow, you can kind of pick and choose and, uh, you know, maybe you're not as stressed for making, um, making as many, you know, it's not about the, the quantity anymore. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but, but just kind of on a year, I, I would guesstimate that we average, uh, you know, uh, one pair a day. Uh, let's see. Uh, James says, how do you feel about the outsourcing customizer groups growing on IG? Um, so I think you're probably talking about the page. I think it's called the custom movement. I think that's what it's called. There might be a dot in there somewhere. And, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure about the, you know, their business model or how anything works. Cause I have not looked into it. But um, I believe they're kind of just a large page that posts all of the artists and then the artists get the orders. And, you know, I don't know how the fulfillment works and things like that. And I'm not sure, you know, if, if there's a commission, there probably is since essentially they're, they're a middleman. Who knows? Maybe they're taking 10 or 20 percent or something like that and uh but they have the eyes and the business so if that's if that's something that you're looking for that could be the way to go now i don't know if they are removing i don't know who's having the interaction with the customer 
um, because um, you you might not be having the interaction with the customer anymore. Maybe they might be handling it. So I'm not sure what happens if somebody's upset with with their order or something like that. So it's tough to figure out, you know, when you're not um, handling, uh, when you're not dealing directly with your customers. So so it just depends if you're trying to grow your business and that's something that you want. That is absolutely something to consider. But if you can grow it yourself, um, the oh okay CW Custom says the custom movement takes a good percent. Lost twenty dollars on a two hundred dollar order. Okay, so that's ten percent. Uh, CW, let me know if you work with them. Let me know if they um, what's it called? Do you deal with the customer or do they just send you the order and say here this person ordered a uh, red Air Force One? Let me know. I'm curious a little bit more about that. But yeah, anytime that you can just do it yourself, interact directly with your customers, that's going to be the way to go. Um, absolutely. So, but hey, if you're trying to grow your business, absolutely something to consider. Uh, H&L Kick says, do you ever pay for YouTube promotion? Uh, would you suggest that's the best way to get your video seen? I could be wrong, but I don't think YouTube works like Facebook or Instagram in the matter of you can pay to promote your own video. If you're going to do YouTube promotion, you might more so do something like send, um, you know, send a pair of shoes to a big YouTuber and have them do an unboxing or a review or something like that. But I don't think you can pay to promote your own YouTube video on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can. I'm like 95% sure you can't. So we have not done that. Um, I'm trying to think if we've done anything with a YouTuber to have them promote it. Uh, probably about four years, three years ago. This is just when Jason started. It's up on his page. If anybody's familiar with the YouTuber Sneakerhead in the Bay, he was doing a lot of custom sneaker videos. He was one of the first ones. If you go to his YouTube page, we sent him a pair of our uh, Cheetah Ultra Boost because for a few years, the way that we ran Days' Custom Footwear is we would have lines uh you know a fall winter line a spring summer line and we would have maybe 10 to 15 shoes during those six month stretches that we would uh try to sell a bunch of and we would have a website where you could pick from these 15 shoes select your size and we'll try to get them made for you in a couple weeks and so our spring summer of 17 line we had a pair of cheetah ultra boost and we sent them to sneakerhead in the bay uh, for for a YouTube promotion and and he reviewed them and and things like that and made a cool video about them, so check that out if you guys are interested. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that is the most that we have done with uh, YouTube promotion. Uh, Rupsy says, "Can you ever use too much tape for a tape shield?" Absolutely not. Uh, if anybody uh, saw our Instagram live the other day, we did a. Um, uh, we hopped on live as we were doing some stencils on the tongue tags of a Jordan one. And we, it was funny. We made a obnoxious tape shield because I had white factory parts of the shoe where I was like, there's no way I'm getting paint on. So I made this big old tape shield and, uh, yeah, yeah better safe than sorry. You know what I'm saying? The last thing you want is paint Lincoln underneath your tape. Uh, let's see. Uh, see follows up with, uh, you deal with the customer. They send you an order and you have the ability to chat with them as you work. Shipping is not built in. So you provide, sh uh, shipping info, uh, tracking info. Awesome. So that's cool that they're not trying to remove you talking to the customers. The artist is behind the shoes. So that's, uh, that's in, that's, that's, I'm, I'm glad they do that. Um, shit, it's a smart move by them. They're probably making good money. Just $20 here and there off every order that comes to them because they have the eyes and they're growing a pretty big page. So that is, uh, uh, you first ordered yesterday and everything went smoothly. Awesome, man. That's good to hear. I am glad you had a good experience with it. Yep. Cool stuff. Uh, Lexus Perry says, how many gigabytes do you have for your iPad or what amount would you suggest to start with for business and mock-up? Certainly nothing under the 64. I'm not even sure what they start at nowadays, but nothing under the 64. That would fill up pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, the bigger you can get, the better. And, um, just as, as, as programs and file sizes and all that, that's going to get bigger over time. So you want something that's going to last you, you know, you know, 
technology quickly gets outdated, unfortunately. So you want something that's at least going to last, you know, four or five years or something like that before you even feel any need to uh, update or upgrade, excuse me. So yeah, a, a minimum of uh, 64 at least. So uh, Kaz says, when does it make sense to become an LLC or register your business? If you're doing it full time, even if you dive right in and start doing it full time right away, start there. It's not going to harm you to uh, register your business. It, it's not a bad thing. It's not like as soon as I register my business, uh, the the taxes are because then you can legally write off all this stuff. So um, absolutely, work. Get with uh, you can you can register your local bank even if you bank with Chase or something like that. You can get all of the paperwork started there and things like that so uh h and kick says i'm doing a pair now for a social media influencer he's got over 100k on tiktok and i'm making a video for it so hopefully i get some traction thanks for the answer phenomenal dude i love it uh i'd love to see them i'd love to see them uh let's see uh, there was a good question here. Okay, Imone Watson says, thoughts on reasonable fulfillment times for customs. I know in most cases it'll depend on the cut you're doing, but how long is too long? That's a great question, especially in the culture nowadays where everything is instant because we are spoiled from Amazon, man. So we have Jeff Bezos to thank for everybody's uh, wanting everything instantaneously. So, I mean... Most of the stuff you buy online nowadays, you get in a day or two, which is phenomenal, but it it's also makes uh, the job for customizers harder. You know what I mean? And uh, so I see some people follow up with anything over a month is too long, and, and I totally get that. So, you know, what I just spoke on um, previously, you know, when, when we ran our business differently in years past and we would have a website where we would have 10 to 15 shoes that you could select from when we would release a new batch, a new line every six months or so. We would be trying to pump those out in about two weeks, three weeks, under a month fast. We would we would be trying to pump it out fast. But it's not like we even had the shoes on hand. So we would take all of the orders for the day. The next day we would order all the shoes, wait for the shoes to get here in the next few days or whatever. Or we, since we worked downtown, we had... Um, Foot Locker and House Hoops and other stores nearby. So depending on how quick everything was needed, sometimes we would just walk, pick up the shoes, whatever the key. So we would be trying to fulfill things extremely quickly. But nowadays, um, because, uh, because I do so much more than just fulfilling client orders, I do things like YouTube. We sell a ton of stencils. We, we just do other things. Um, now I, I extend my wait times by a lot so I can take the time to do stuff and really spend the time on projects. So now I, so you're going to lose more clients by telling people you have a longer wait time. So now I tell everybody, um, even if I'm able to get things done in a month or two, I'm going to say that the wait's going to be, you know, three or four months because, Something might come up where I need to do something for YouTube videos or I need to do something for our, our stencils or I need to do whatever it may be. So I'd rather overextend and potentially lose a few clients um, at this point in my business because, um, you know, but if you're if you're just starting out and you need to take on more business, yeah, you want to have a shorter wait time because, you know, this way you're not going to scare off any customers for those longer wait times. So... That is uh, that is what I would say on that. Uh, Baba A says, I need advice, guys. I just got my first customer. Uh, want me to customize shoes? Is Air Force One provided? How much should I charge? How complex do you think the design is and how long do you think it'll take you? And do you already have all the supplies? Do you, have, do you already have all the paints needed? And things like that. Let us know and we'll try to help you. Uh, CW Custom says, I'm still making up my mind if I can paint the plastic parts of a pair of Air Max 90s. Your thoughts? Yes. So Air Max 90s. I hate Air Max 90s because of all those plastic parts. They take up large portions of the, shoe, of the shoes, those little eyelet panels, and then that heel tab on the back. Do I think that you could paint them? Essentially, in theory, that is what a for. It's for materials that have zero flex. Those little eyelet panels have zero flex. They're hard, they're plasticky. That is what too hard should be for. 
but I'm just always hesitant. I just don't like to do it because it's just a material that I know the paint doesn't want to bond to. The too hard is there to help it, but the paint does not want to bond to it, okay? So in a way with the too hard, you're trying to force it to bond to there, but it doesn't want to bond to there in my opinion. If we're just talking about what the paint wants. Um, so could it be done? Probably. If I were to do it and I had to do it, I would do it with too hard. So yes. Uh, Will says, do you recommend using an iPhone or a camera to take pictures of your shoes? Um, iPhone smartphones are, they're catching up. They're, they're of course still not as good as really expensive glass in a DSLR, you know what I mean? But they are getting really, 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 really good. So you can get by with your iPhone. You can do great stuff, but a DSLR camera, if you're making money and you're running a business, it's still going to be the way to go. It's still worth the money. It's still a higher quality photo without a doubt. So, um, Horn Custom Design says, if they provide the shoe, do you charge a price for that? And one, if you have to purchase the shoe? Yeah, If so if I have to purchase the shoe for a client, all I charge is the cost of the shoe. So if I'm purchasing an Air Force One, you just add $100 to the price. And I mean, sometimes maybe you get an Air Force One for $90 and sometimes maybe you get it for 110 So you could factor that. Sometimes you got to pay for tax. Sometimes you got to pay for shipping. I don't know. It. I mean, at the end of the day, that isn't going to make or break anything, but you just add $100 to the price. Same thing with the Jordan 1. Sometimes the Jordan 1 might cost 125 after tax, shipping, whatever. So maybe you add that. But just those quick little numbers to to be in your head of yeah it's going to cost that now if i have a client who wants a jordan 5 and i need to track down a, a jordan 5 fire red from 2013 i need to see well what's that going to cost in their size because a uh, size 8 is going to cost something different than a size 11 so i need to know more about your size and then go check what the market value and, and what that shoe is going for at this point Uh, Custom Care says, are there any claim rights on using LV patterns, Gucci patterns, all of that fun stuff? Um, so so that stuff is all a gray area. It's tricky. It's muddy waters. Um, you, you cannot mass produce their stuff. I do not think that you should post, um, because if you have a website with a listing saying we have LV shoes, that's where it looks like you're essentially kind of having like an inauthentic product. But if you're just doing a one-off pair of of custom shoes then you're not then i don't i'm not an attorney but i don't think they're going to come knocking on your door for posting that on instagram okay but uh it is i can tell you it is not a good idea because you are running a risk of um of them of you know upsetting some people if you do have a website where you're like here buy my gucci air force ones my lv air force ones my dior jordan ones all that type of stuff so Yep. Uh, Christopher A says, do you recommend a DIY airbrush cleaner solution or buy the real deal? Uh, the cost to get the real deal versus a DIY uh, is is not worth it. A DIY cleaner, just get you some, um, you know, Fabuloso. That's what I use. Uh, some people will get really mad at hearing you say you use a product like Windex in an uh, airbrush. Because there's supposedly something in Windex that breaks down the metal and the parts in an airbrush. I've used it before, so um, yes, you can you can uh, consider doing that. But Fabuloso is a great one. Uh, Stan says, "Do you show your clients a Photoshop preview? If so, how realistic do you make it?" Um, Typically, yeah, it's not a bad idea if you need to seal the deal, you need to close the deal. If you're worried that, hey, I don't know if me and my client are on the same page, um, then yeah. Um, but you don't necessarily need to make it incredibly realistic. You can if you want, but I do it more of like in a digital, quick kind of filling in a coloring book type style where I'm just working with solids and, and things like that, typically. So, da, da, da. Okay, let's see. Danny says, I'm going to start taking orders soon and charging by time. But have you ever come across someone asking you, for example, well, how do I know it took you six hours to work on the shoe? What would you say or do? So, um, 
if you're saying that you're going to give them the price after you do the work, then I don't think that is correct. I th they're going to ask you first and foremost how much up front. So let's say you're charging by the hour and it takes you six hours. Let's say you want to charge $25 an hour. Six times 25 is going to be $150. So that client's going to ask you how much. You're going to say $150. They're either going to say yes or no. They're not going to, you can, you can explain how you got to that price, but they're not going to say, well, how do I know this takes you six hours? You know what I mean? Um, so in a way you're, Question, nobody's going to argue with you on, um, they're not going to argue with you on how long it takes. They're just going to argue with you on, I want to pay a lower price. Th they can't tell you, hey, that, that can only take you four hours. That can't, that, that's not allowed to take you six hours. That's not a question that they're going to ask. Here, you want to charge me $150. I'm only willing to charge $100. Now, if it's still going to take you um, a hundred hours, or six, excuse me, if it's still going to take you six hours, if they're only willing to pay a hundred, now it's up to you to decide, are you willing to work for $16.66 an hour rather than the $25 an hour you wanted to charge? So yeah, they're not going to argue with you on, hey, you know, it's not allowed to take you that long. They're just going to say, I'm only willing to pay this much. You know what I mean? So, um, the, the pricing by time isn't, uh, yeah, that's what I would say about the pricing by time. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, ba, 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 ba. let's see here. Um, I know you stand by all, uh, Eric says, I know you stand by all Angela's products, which are the best, but, but can using a regular nail polish remover be just as good or is the Angelus leather prep better? So uh, I don't recommend doing this, but if you just were to smell regular nail polish remover versus acetone or preparing de glazer, there's a large difference in the smell because of how much stronger they are. Nail polish remover is not strong enough to break down the factory coating in my opinion. So I don't even use... Angelus Leather Preparer and Glazer. I use acetone from a hardwood store because it's even stronger than uh, Preparer and Glazer, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Uh, just as uh, what sneakers? I like that you call me Seuss. I like that, man. That's funny. Uh, I've never been called that. That's funny, though. I like seeing that. Uh, what sneakers do you suggest clients purchase for customs besides Air Force Ones and Jordan Ones? Some potential clients, especially females, don't care for Air Force Ones and Jordans. It depends what they're into. Uh, for years, for many, many years, if you guys have on our Instagram, I was not painting Air Force Ones and Jordan Ones, really. It was only models whatever the Jordan um, model was for the year or two, because from, you know, maybe 2011 when I started till 2015, there was maybe like two Jordans that were releasing in like 10 colorways during that year. So in like 2011 to 2013, we saw like 12 different Jordan 3s. So we were just painting Jordan 3s and using different bases. And then, you know, from 2012 to 14, there was like 10 different colorways of Jordan 5s. So we were using all different Jordan 5s and things like that. So um, whatever they might be into, maybe they're into Vans, maybe they're into Jordans and they want to use something like Jordan 3s or 4s. Or, you know, maybe they're more into Toms or even simpler shoes, things like that. So whatever they're into, it's all about what the client wants. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jesse Colaco says, if you approach someone to ask if you can make them a shoe, should you charge them? That's a great question. So if you're potentially reaching out to somebody for the sake of trying to gain publicity or something like that, should you charge them? That's a great question because in a way, I like to think of that of like, if you're reaching out to an NFL player and you're saying, I want to make shoes for you, um, should you charge them? Well, that the, there's uh there's a couple answers be expecting it for free because they're saying here you want to get your work on the field you want me to you want to get your work in this locker room they might be expecting it free or potentially you reach out to them you might just be reaching out to them to let them know about your service and this is what we did for years back when we were trying to grow in the nfl is we just sent out dms all day to say hey check out our page here's a service we offer so just Trying to essentially, 
I'm a little bit older. I'm not old, but I'm 20. How old am I? What year is it? 2020. I'm 28. So I'm a little bit older than I know a lot of our audience, which is, you know, um, you guys are young from somewhere from, I know we have people that are as young as 12 in here sometimes. So, you know, you guys are 12 to 20, something like that. So, you know, in a way, I grew up in a time where there wasn't social media. So, but the ways that businesses advertise themselves, such as mailers, they sent out, um, you know, advertisements in the mail and things like that. So essentially try to think of what we did with NFL players of sending, we tried to drop a, a advertisement in their virtual mail, mailbox, their Instagram DMs, and just let them know about this service that they may have otherwise never uh, known existed or this page. So here, check out the Hayes' custom footwear. Here's a few examples of some cool cleats we've done in the past. If this is something that interests you, we would love to work with you. And then, th and then they might say, well, okay, how much do you charge? Or they might say, okay, well, I want some free. And then you can decide, well, hey, I don't work for free, all right? I don't know. I don't work for free for nobody. You might say that, or you might be wanting to take on the business and, and get, your, get your foot in the door in the NFL. So you might say, hey, I'll gladly work for free. Will you post about them? And then maybe, th maybe they'll agree to post about them or something like that. So that is, uh, that is what we have done in the past. So you can potentially do it for free, or you could potentially say you're just trying to let them know about a service that you offer. You're trying to send out a, a coupon or something like that per se. You know how, uh, I'm sure you guys even still get them by you. Sometimes you know how you get little flyers, um, sometimes from the nearby pizza restaurants in your, in your area, and they send you a full menu or something like that. Sometimes you still see those pop up in your mailboxes or whatnot. So... Yep. Uh, that that's that's uh that's how to compare it. Yep. Da, da, da. Uh, okay, Joe, Joe Anaman says, why do the stencils I buy differ from the ones I make on my Cameo 4? I can see the cut lines on the ones that I buy. On the ones I make, they're very hard. Some don't even weed. I use the factory setting. So, uh, Joe, what most likely is happening is um, whoever you buy them from might be using a different vinyl, and maybe it's a thinner vinyl or something like that. Um, or you may just need to go at a little bit higher of a thickness on your Cameo. So if you're just cutting vinyl, you might be somewhere at a thickness of 4. Maybe you try a thickness of 15, and then the cut lines will be a whole lot stronger. That cut will be a little bit deeper. It'll be a little bit easier to weed. Of course, you don't want to go too thick or turn your blade up too high because then it might really rough up the vinyl and cut too thick. And then the, the cut lines might not be clean anymore. So, yep. That is, uh, that is uh, what you may need to do for your, your stencils that are being cut. High Kicks Custom says, how can you tell a client that you are not comfortable doing a design that's out of your comfort zone or artistic ability? I think I think transparency with your clients is always going to be uh, the most important thing. Really just letting them know, hey, that's not something that I'm particularly, maybe let's do it in this way. So I'm not comfortable in a, a realism style, but here I can do a cartoon style. Let's do something like that. But just transparency. Don't necessarily take on a theme that you can't handle because then you're just going to have to deal with an upset client. So full transparency always. So, yep. Uh, CW Custom says, when's the next episode of Guess the Price? So we filmed Guess the Price and our TikTok video this week. Those are simpler videos for us. So we have those filmed and they could kind of be released at any time. So in a way, they're somewhat like uh, videos that we have ready to go anytime we don't have a longer format video for the week. So when will those be? We filmed another episode of Reviewing Your Customs this week. So I would say that those... There, there's potential that we might have to drop it next week out of nowhere because maybe we don't have something else ready. But then there, there's also the chance that it's not out for another, you know, three, four weeks or so. But uh, we have two new good episodes of that, so that's uh, fun stuff. Those are those are fun episodes. Yep. Uh, let's see here. H and L Kick says, "Have you ever told a customer it's going to be more?" to do a certain design if you realized midway through that it's going to take X amount of more time supplies. 
I don't think I've done that because I want to be, I want to stay true to the cost that I gave up front because I'm somewhat of a, I guess my personality type is somewhat, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't want to say I'm non-confrontational, but I don't want to have to go to the client and say, look here, um, it's going to be an extra hundred dollars because no matter what you're, you're going against your word kind of per se, in my opinion. And even if, even if it's true that it's going to cost more supplies, more materials, more time, and even if they under, even if you said, here, look, this is taking a lot harder or something went wrong, something like that, in a way, no matter what, you're telling them that, hey, it's going to cost more than the price I gave you. So in a way, no matter what, telling somebody they owe more money than they thought is somewhat going to upset them. So that's not a conversation that I want to have. So in a way, I kind of think stay true to your word as long as that's possible per se no of course a situation may come up where where that happens and you may have to do that but that's a that's a uh topic or conversation that i would try to avoid yeah uh marl dane luna says i only used a glazer for deep cleaning the brush yeah uh i've i've used acetone to root when i'm like man my airbrush some junked up in here. I need to get some acetone in there because that's really going to loosen up any, because sometimes, you know, if you airbrush a lot, you know, and you let that in paint it's dried up in there. It's really dried in there. Acetone or deglaze or something like that is really going to loosen that up and help you get rid of uh, some of those clogs and whatnot. So yeah. Uh, Repsy says, continental ladies, what are we talking about? What was, uh, what was the stuff about continental ladies? I love them. I love them. James Lee says, got some time to check out some Instagrams. We could do that. We could do that. We could do that. Uh, let me know who wants, let's see. Yeah, we got a little bit of time. We could check out some Instagrams. Let me know. Um, uh, any of my mods, Repsy or Kong, um, drop your Instagrams. Tell Repsy or Kong to check them out. And just uh, Repsy Kong, let me know. Make sure we have a page that has enough, you know, you know what I always say. Make there's enough for everybody to learn from. They'll kind of give me the go-ahead to, hey, that's a good page. Let's uh, let's check them out. So I'll answer a couple more questions while we do that. Uh, Beckham Custom says, what do you think is a design for a custom shoe that is overused? Personal V print. Yeah, of course. Those stuff, that's going to be overused. It's been done on every shoe. So if you're going to do that stuff, uh, maybe you find a way to make it your own or put your own spin on it. Yeah. Da da da. Let's see. Uh, Twain says, "If twenty-eight is old, I'm ancient." Yeah, man. Believe me, I I have no idea how I feel old because I swear, like eighteen to now, I'm twenty-eight. The last ten years is is like a blur. Like, I, literally, every time somebody asks me how old I am, I I have to think because, like, am I eighteen? Am I twenty-one? Am I? Oh, I'm twenty-eight. Ah, oh, shit. It, it it all goes so quick. But our audience, the people I talk to. They're so young. It's incredible. So incredible. Uh, Dwayne says, do cleats you do for NFL players hold up for multiple wears or is it just one to two games? Yeah, we have some players that wear them for, you know, half the season, a quarter of the season or stuff like that. Uh, Dylan Salon says, if I want to sell pre-made customs, where should I sell them? I would create your own website. I would sell them on Etsy, eBay, Craigslist, offer up, post them on all of those sites. Uh, Curtis Rempe says, I was prepping some Air Force ones and I realized they were fake when the top white cut of the leather started breaking up. How should I prep it if it breaks apart? So yeah, cheap leather sucks to work on it. Um, you have to, so to get the surface even even, you need to use some really fine sandpaper grits. So that is, um, uh, that is what I recommend. You really need to spend some time with the really high sandpaper grits, you know, the 1500 and even go past that to just level out the surface for you to be uh, working on. Uh, I got a lot of uh, people along my age at least saying 28 is not old. <laughs> Repsy says I'm old as hell. So I'm glad I'm glad we're not all 16 in here. That's good. Um Uh, let's see. Uh, New York Sports 54 says, I just joined. Not sure if this has been asked, but I'm a really big fan and recently started watching. I wanted to know how I could get started in art and customizing shoes and doing stuff like this. Awesome stuff, buddy. Thank you so much for drawing or joining us. Uh, your next comment says I'm pretty weak drawing wise. So 
you know, um, first and foremost, the most important thing is just making the decision that I'm, I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to buy the supplies needed to do this and I'm just going to give it a shot. And my first pair, it doesn't, I don't need to be Picasso right off the bat. I just need to take that leap of faith and get better over time. No matter what, your first pair is not going to be as, as good as a pair you're able to do a year from now, five years from now, anything like that. So just saying that you're going to do it. And thankfully nowadays, there's so many YouTube pages and, 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 and things on the internet, resources that you can learn from on how to properly do stuff so you're not just going in completely blindfolded. So when I'm trying to learn a new craft or something like that, just spend some time watching other people do it that you like to learn from. And maybe it's me. I'm not even somebody who's going to, uh, I don't want to, to, you know, be that person that says, here, you have to go, you have to watch all of our videos. But, it, you know, if you like what we do, maybe you go and watch some of, our some of our videos and watch how we do certain things. And we try to be thorough with, with um, our videos and, and, and try to teach in a lot of them. Every video, we try to have something that people can learn from. So maybe you'll be able to take something away from our videos and uh, they'll give you a little bit of a uh, head start. So uh, let's see. Uh, Jason says, do you use PayPal for your sales? If so, how do you avoid chargeback scams? So, uh, yes, I use the one way that, so, so let's see a chargeback scam. The only way somebody could claim a chargeback on you is it's changed over the years, the numbers. So for them to claim a chargeback, it would likely be that they never received the item. All you would need to do is provide tracking info. And I'm pretty sure that's for a very high threshold, like items up to maybe 500 or maybe 750 or maybe even $1,000. As long as you're charging below that, all you need to do with PayPal is provide tracking to their PayPal shipping address. So let's say you did the custom artwork and you have the tracking that you sent it to them. All you need to do to provide PayPal if they're trying to file a chargeback is provide that tracking. Now, let's say you're charging more than that. Let's say, for example, you're charging $2,000. You may need a signature confirmation. So you may need to, with whatever shipping service you use, you may need to select to pay for, you need them to sign that they actually received this package. Other than that, I'm also 99% sure that a client can't file a chargeback scam and just say, I'm unhappy with the product. I don't think they can do that for custom artwork. And then I would also include custom artwork on the PayPal invoice. So say it's custom artwork on an Air Force One or something like that, and just make sure that you have the uh, tracking info. And other than that, you should not run into any chargeback scams. Uh, yes, let's see. Okay, so my buddy Repsy gave us a... Uh, one more question before we hop into Instagrams, because Repsy gave me a couple good ones from David Moshkowicz. Hopefully I said that right, buddy. Uh, does it ever take you seven to eight coats to achieve a good color consistency? That is possible. Seven to eight, that's right at that threshold of I do not want to go higher than that. Seven to eight, as long as they're mainly really thin coats, you know, that means it probably took you, it, it probably took you three coats to even get a nice base. And then, you know, another three coats to get some build up in there and then two more coats of the final color. And yeah, you don't want to go past that because you don't want to put too much paint on there. But there is stuff where it's taken me that many, but that is on the, that is on the high end. I think five to six is going to be the most, four to six is going to be the most common where I want to be at. Okay, so let us check these ones that, uh that he, um, Repsy let us know about. Let's see here. Also, we got a, sorry, did not show in here. Let me see. Yes, okay. We got another super chat from our buddy CW Customs. Can you look at my Air Max 90 mock-up? Absolutely, buddy. Let me know how, if you want to send it to me in a DM. Send it to uh, the, yeah, send it in a DM to the, uh, to the Instagram, uh, the DCF experience. I'm about to pull it up on the screen here. Send it, send it to me as a DM on this Instagram. 
at the DCF experience. And let me see these first ones that Repsy said we should take a look at. CMD Customs. C, okay, CMD dot customs. The dots, sometimes the dots get me. Sometimes we've pulled up other, uh, other people's Instagrams in the past. Okay, CMD customs, chasing my dreams customs. Okay, so the bio says customs, restorations, jeans, jean jackets, hats, DM for coats, prices started at 100, PVA, MU, located in Houston, Texas. Okay, so let's see. Got a Kobe pair here, the little yellow to purple gradient. Some clean stencil work. I like these. The I like the splatter. It's cool stuff. Uh, purple to yellow fade. That is, that is one of the hardest fades. I mean, literally, purple and yellow are complementary colors, and purple paint is very strong versus yellow paint. So, this is an extremely hard gradient to achieve, and it's okay here. It's okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I would say. It's it's really hard to do. But the gradient is not bad here. I will say that. Um, so that's cool stuff. I like that pair. It looks like we have a cheetah pattern uh, pair of Adidas here. I like I like uh, that you essentially tried like a, a, a little bit of a vignette towards the midsole. And what I'm going to say about that, uh, buddy, is it looks like you used pure black for your vignette on the midsole here. As we look towards the toe cap, you guys can really see that's like a pure black what I would, what I think would have looked a little bit cleaner here, and then you have that same vignette, you know, kind of around where the laces go in, is using a dark brown rather than the pure black. That would have been a little bit softer, a little bit cleaner, and uh, I think that would have uh, led to a little bit of a better result. Uh, a pair of Air Forces where you actually removed the swoosh and reattached it. I mean, it looks clean here. I'm not sure how you necessarily attached it, but it looks clean. I'm not sure if you, you know, laid down some barge cement or something to lay it back down. So that was cool. Uh, here we have some stenciling on these, uh, on this Miami Dolphins pair. Again, a uh, uh, teal to orange gradient. That's not easy to do. Um, keep practicing those gradients, you know, try that middle bar technique. That'll really help you. But the stencil work is clean. This is cool stuff. Of course, you guys know me. I'm one thing you can't say is I'm not consistent with what I say. Edit the photos. Spend the time to bring these photos into Lightroom, into Snapseed, into a photo editing software, and it's going to lead to a cleaner result. Um, the photos got better from 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 here. Just taking it, you know, here on a desk, up against the wall. Um, clearly, you know, these photos of just restoration on a cleat here. Um, but all of these, you know, just on the, on the hardwood floor here, just the framing and everything is is obviously um, it's gotten better. You know what I mean here, just outdoors. Now again, I still think the framing and composition would be better. This photo would look cleaner if it was edited more. So a uh, little bit, there's still room for growth in the photography, but you, you have the right mindset for how you're doing it as far as selecting backgrounds, grass, concrete, things like that. Um, so so the, the concept is there. Just keep working on that and you will be off and running. So yeah, there's definitely like a, there's a turning point here on the page, kind of as we got towards, you know, uh, th this line, this this Air Force summer, it says, and, and all of the newer work starting to look a little bit cleaner. But now here are these, these look like they were just taken up, up against, whether it be the floor or a door or something like that. But this is just, since it's indoor, it's hard, just not a good photo. You know what I mean? It's just not pleasing for anybody to look at. I know this is a before picture and you're trying to show the after, but it's just not a pleasing photo to look at. You know what I mean? So, so things like that to consider. So good stuff, buddy. Keep it up. Bio, short and sweet. Nothing wrong with that. Um, got a, got a simple to read logo. So good stuff. Keep it up. Um, also, like I said, I'm always going to be consistent. Um, I'll, 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 I'll give my opinion because that's what you guys want to hear. I'm not a fan of, of logos on photos or watermarks, really. And uh, especially sort of like in, in, in this way where it's, it's not doing the job of a watermark because um, people can just, it's in an area where people could just stamp that out in Photoshop if you're actually worried about people stealing your photos. So good stuff, though, buddy. Tay, 
Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, okay, we got another one here. Sneaker Gold. Three, right? Sneaker Gold. Three. Bink Customs. Over in Miami. Custom sneakers. Shipping worldwide. Restorations. No soul swaps. Pricing DM me. CEO of uh, up your personal page. Facebook Sneaker Gold. Cool stuff. Let's see what we got on the story. Yeah, of course, being active on the story, I don't think you had a, a post on the uh, story uh, CMD Customs. Staying active on there. Yep, staying active on the story. This is good stuff. Just reposting some of your work. Cool stuff. Okay, here. So taking a look at some of the work. I can't uh, typically speak on uh, restoration work because it's not something I do. So speaking on how clean, you know, this, this um, re-icing on the Jordan 6s here is, it looks clean, but I don't, I don't really do any restoration work. So typically I won't, I won't speak on that too much. But here we have a pair of like LV Air Forces. Those are clean. Those are simple. Uh, a thing that I would recommend here is it looks like the you placed the logos by hand rather than how the pattern exactly is. So specifically what I mean is if we take a look at here on the front part of the swoosh, here we have that LV, okay, the literal LV. And then to the left of it, we have what I like to call like the little flower looking thing, how it's a circle. And then above it, you have the little diamond looking flower. Now look at how close to the LV the little diamond is versus look at how far away the little circle is. Now all of that spacing should be consistent. So it looks like everything that's going along the swoosh is consistent, but you decided to place, um, you know, that little diamond one on top of the LV just to put in another part of the pattern. So anytime you're doing pattern work, in my opinion, you want it to stay true to the pattern because that's what makes it the most recognizable. Otherwise, um, you know, you run into stuff like this. And even for example here, just because I know the pattern, since you have LV, then the circle, and then the little um, cross by itself, next to it should be another circle if the pattern were were true. So not taking the liberty to just do the pattern in any which way you wanted it is something that I recommend, but of course that's me nitpicky. Um, okay. Uh, some Miami, Miami Vice Air Force is taking outside of the heat arena. That's cool stuff. I like that. You know, going the extra length to uh, get a cool photo set. I dig them with the, uh, you know, kind of got the Miami vibes here with the photo set, with the water in the background. That's cool stuff. A pair of Witherspoon uh, Vans. Good stuff. Some Drip Air Forces just taken outside up against a tree and whatnot. Bape Vans. The work is clean. The work is clean. But as always, I would say could could spend some more time on the photography to really make this product look premium. If you want to have premium pricing, you got to have premium photography. You guys know what I'm saying because you guys hear me say it all the time. So yeah, good stuff. Though. Good stuff. The, the feed is clean, a nice mix of everything. I would say, um, yeah, you do have some videos here and there. Yep. That's cool stuff. I always like to see uh, a nice a nice wide range of content. Some close-ups like you have here and then some videos and things like that. A nice uh, wide range of different forms of content. So cool stuff, buddy. Cool stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Brandy Rodriguez says, I just wanted to drop a thank you for the customs you did for me as an anniversary gift for my husband. He loved, loved, loved them. Awesome. I believe those were the Batman and Joker Jordan 3s, right, Brandy? Um, those were, that was a fun project, and I am super glad that he loved them. Uh, I know you had sent me a photo of, like, his man cave, and he had a lot of Batman and Joker stuff, and that is just one of my favorite uh, clients to work for when, when I know somebody is passionate about a theme, and then I get to try to put my own uh, spin on it and things like that. So that was awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Pleasure working with you. Absolutely. Uh, okay, CW wants me to check it out on his page. Let's pull that up, cw.customs. I'm on the right one, right? CW.customs. Is it on your story, maybe? Okay, here. 
Okay, so this is a Kobe one. Yeah, so you got the yellow to purple fade, and then the 8 and 24 on the toe box. Um, what would I say? What would I say? Um, hmm. Personally, if I'm going to be doing a Kobe or a Laker theme, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit less white, to be honest with you. This looks pretty heavy on the white. Like if I just look up at the digital mock-up, not looking at where you have just the numbers on the toe box, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say more purple and yellow, personally. Whichever one you want to go with, whether it be more purple or, or more yellow, but that's just my taste. But um, I like the concept of the two different colors on the um, little eyelet panels, and then the gradient along that long panel that runs along the entire side. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Again, yellow to purple is a really tough gradient to pull off, but I, I, I know you could do it. So yeah, my thoughts are I would con I would I would consider more color. That's what I would consider. And potentially a little less black because there's, you know, I, I know those Lake the Lakers have those uniforms now which have some black in them, but Kobe didn't wear those. Well, he did have he did have one black jersey, but Typically, you know, when you just think about Kobe, it's a lot of yellow and a lot of purple. So that's that's just what I would consider. Those are the first things that, that come to my mind, um, at least. I always love to, if I'm doing a sports theme, whether it be a Kobe theme, a team theme, I like to look up the jerseys and look up, you know, what, what are the stripe patterns on the jerseys? What are the, some of the hidden little details and uh, things like that? So that's what I would say. That's what I would say, buddy. But cool stuff. Looking forward to seeing uh, what you come up with for those. Uh, let's see. Okay, Repsy, Repsy gave us another one. Street King Designs. Let's check that out. Street King. Whoops. Make sure I spell it right. Designs with a Z. Okay. So, uh, first off, uh, got to stay active on the story, always. Only got to post once a day, every 24 hours. So, CEO, uh, your personal page, customized shoes, location, Georgetown, Guayana. Hopefully I said that right. Call or WhatsApp, 50% deposit required. Link to your YouTube page. Cool stuff. Um, wow, a nice wide range of stuff. Trying to see what's going to catch my eye first. A lot of cool stuff here. Those Pennywise definitely caught my attention, but I'm just trying to get a feel for the whole thing first. Let's see. Cool stuff. All right. So, um, the rainbow foams. This is kind of cool. Somewhat in like a, a colorful color blocking style. I really like those. Uh, these these Pennywise. These could these these caught my eyes. That's cool. Dig those. These caught my eyes for sure. The tie dye. I dig that. This almost has somewhat like a Serato style. Of course, anytime you do a colorful galaxy, everybody instantly thinks, you know, Serato kind of. And you put your own spin on it though. You know what I mean? Okay, the bandana Air Forces. Is that painted or did you or is that a, a okay, so that's a fabric, it looks like, yeah. The Pikachu, I like this. This is cool that you did the uh, extra little Photoshop work. Dig that. Dig that. But again, like these types of photos, this type of stuff, like where clearly it's just kind of, you know, you're, you're, you're just chilling there and, you know, you have your foot off in the background and you're just showing off the shoe, a restoration. Just, just spend more time with the photography. You know what I mean? As, as artists and creatives, if you're going to spend a lot of time doing a craft, you want the, the presentation of that craft to be at a high level also. So I think throughout the page as a whole, you know, I say this to everybody, I think that the photography could be better, the presentation. I like this, the, this these black pumas, you have them up against this painting here, things like that. Um, edit the photos, you know, in, a, in an app like Lightroom, Snapseed, so many good ones. These are clean these uh, little sunset air forces, that's good stuff. The yellow laces, the blue tongue tagging design, dig these, dig these. But yeah, I'm just gonna say the photography. Photography, premium product,
premium pricing, you gotta you gotta do it. You gotta do it. Uh, Toothpick Gang merch. We, we so so as soon as we have the uh, the course coming, we will uh, be getting uh, merch design for everybody who comes to the course, and then that's when we'll be putting in a bigger for um, all of our uh, for all of uh, our supporters here on YouTube too. That's when we'll be releasing all that. So hopefully soon. Hope soon. Uh, let's see, let's see here. Mm -mm. Okay, so almost time to, almost time to call it a day, guys. We will, I'll answer a couple more questions. Couple more questions, let's see. Uh, Dylan Salon says, is there any way to use a base shoe more than once? Like do multiple customs on one pair of shoes. Yeah. This is something that I talked about a stream before. Um, if you, you know, if, if that's, if that's something you need, Hey, you need more practice shoes. You need to put out more content, something like that. You can paint a design on a pair of shoes, get a ton of content out it, ton of con content on it, and then go ahead, strip them down with acetone or something like that and start over. You know what I mean? Put a completely new design on it. And then get a bunch of new content out of that new painting and lather, rinse, repeat type deal. That is absolutely something you could do. Uh, let's see. Thank you, CW Customs. We appreciate that, buddy. Greatly appreciate uh, your super chats, buddy. Good luck. And like I said, look forward to seeing what you can uh, cook up on those Air Maxes. Good stuff, buddy. Uh, HNL Kicks says, could you check my IG on live before you go? Yes, we can, buddy. Let me know. Is it HNL Kicks? Let me know if that's the name of the page. I will assume that's it, and we'll see. I don't know if it's going to be and or if it's going to be like the symbol for and is H and L. Let's see if that's what it is. H and L custom. Or H and L kicks. Let's see. Let me know. Uh, is this? Yes, but it's okay. Underscores. Let's see. H. Underscore and. Underscore. L underscore. Okay. So Hessen Lawson. So. Okay. So a two people team. So I, I would consider, I would consider, hey, nobody ever wants to, nobody ever wants to have to change their name, but that name is not easy to, to search up, you know, all the underscores and things like that. That's not fun to do. Um, and it's just harder to get searched up and found. So just something I would consider. Uh, if somebody was telling me to uh, change my name, uh, believe me, I'd say uh, I'd, I'd, I'd be hesitant too, which I did because originally I went by De Jesus Customs. And had a separate logo and everything, and then uh, ended up changing to DeHazus Custom Footwear and getting a new logo and all that stuff. But believe me, I was hesitant at first. So let's see what we have here on the uh, story. Just a post. I like these Jordan 3s. That's cool. But again, right away. See how I can sort of see your, um, your air conditioner in the background right away, something like that. So this is a little bit cleaner if it's just up against, you know, whether it be if you want to do this outdoors, if it's just up against, you know, the brick or something like that. I know it's more about the video, something it's more about the video and trying to show off the the uh, the changing of the paint with the heat. But just something I would consider. A little time lapse and dig that. Color changing daisies. I, I would edit the photo still. Edit them, bring them into Lightroom, Snapseed, something like that. But again, the, the effort is absolutely there that you're trying to select better backgrounds. Like a photo like this, again, where I see like the air conditioning in the background, your hand is there. I know it's to try to sort of get it to a certain angle, but your hand isn't adding context to the photo. So if you're trying to tilt the shoes up at that angle, like I'm trying to show the shoes at this angle, let me put a rock or something here, something that's hidden, you know, that you could push under there and it's not seen from the certain angle where you're trying to take the photo, uh, or whether it be tape or something like that, put something there so that you don't have to have your hand to hold the shoe like this. Like if I put this mouse here, you know, 
or w whatever it may be. Of course, it's not going to work cleanly, but um, let's see. Something. Just put something there. Pretend that's a little rock, and now I can get whatever angle you may need it to be. You, sometimes you got to get creative with your surroundings, uh, but things like that. So, yes, yes, that's 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 what I would say. So again, you know, something like this. This is uh, from May. Um, so let me see. What else? What else? Or can I give some more context? Like I like this type of stuff of you showing. Look at this, and and thirty five hundred views on Instagram. That's really good. I think that's more than you have followers. So that's that's awesome stuff. Um, and that's clean that you do in the red lightning, like the way you did that. Good stuff. So yeah, just um, you're putting out. That was May. Wow, you're putting out a ton of content. Like look at how far back I scroll, and this is October of last year. So like consistency, yeah. Uh, consistency, you got bang on. If I look, you know, maybe 20 posts ago, we're, we're in May and that's still this month. So, I mean, you're almost posting once a day. Look at this. I actually like this one better, this video, because it's just the concrete. I don't see like the air condition in the background and I don't see your slippers and your socks. You know what I mean? Things like that. So this video right here that we have on the screen is better than which video was it? I think this one. Yeah. Because this one, you see, I see the air conditioning and things like that. That's It's not doing anything, you know what I mean? So that's just nitpicking and, of course, me just talking about framing, composition, all that type of stuff. But it just adds to a level of uh, professionalism. So, yeah, but consistency, you are you are doing the damn thing, that's for sure. Now, just continue to improve that quality and you will be on your way. Oh, check out that photo. That is sweet. I dig that. Heck yeah, look at that, man. That's cool. The color is shifting paint. Good stuff. Looks like you're doing a lot with that. So it seems like, you know, your clients are starting to like that. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. And like I said, just edit the photos too. That'll, that'll of course, increase that increase that quality. Also. Okay. The last one we're going to do here because my buddy D-Mail sent in a uh, super chat for us. Thank you, buddy. Greatly appreciate any of you guys taking the time to uh, send those in. Really means a lot to us. So let's go ahead. Dmills.customkicks. Let's check it out. Dmills dot custom. All right. Customization and cleanings. DM to get your pair done. Design determines the price. Military vet, black owned business. Well, military, thank you for your service, buddy. Truly mean that. And uh, so, again, something that I always say, one of the first things I notice is make sure you stay active on the story. You only got to post once every 24 hours, but anytime somebody comes to your page, you want to have that orange ring because um, you want them to know that you're an active page. So that type of stuff, uh, you know, it does matter in my opinion. The work looks clean. The work looks clean. Zooming in, checking it out. Dig these Saints uh, Jordan 1s. I like the gold piping everywhere. Clean stuff. But it looks like you might have added like that Instagram little blur around it. Now again, there's not necessarily anything wrong with, with a blur, but it has to serve a purpose. And here it doesn't, it doesn't serve a purpose because you don't necessarily want the the shoes blurred out for any reason and the shoes aren't even all the way in uh the frame you're not you know some parts of the shoes are cut off now you might have been trying to get a detail shot here of showing off those two different logos on the two different shoes but if you are doing that of course parts of the shoes would be cut off but i would try to get even closer with a uh with the camera and a shot so if I had to choose a best photo here on the page, I would say it's this one right here where we're looking at you holding the shoe. This is the thing that a lot of people do. You hold the shoe and then the other shoe is off in the distance. Now, one thing that I would say is framing of this, this is the left shoe, even though it's on the right side of the frame, it looks awesome. Okay, that's great. But with this shoe down here, if you position that a little bit better to fill up more of the frame of all this empty space here, that would make this for an even better photo. So the, the number one thing I'm going to notice on anybody's Instagram page is going to be, you know, framing, composition, photography, editing the photos, lighting, all that type of stuff. Right here, um, this looks like it might be, you know, on a deck or your backyard, something like that. Here we have the shading where, you know, we have all of it's in shade, but then you have, you know, from maybe a roof or an overhang on your house, you have the left side of the frame here is still a sunny day. So, um, 
that's where you know sometimes you got to shoot photo at a different time of day because again this just takes away from that professional type look to the photo when there's those little tiny little things and it's just the, the, but that these are things that hopefully everybody can learn from because believe me i didn't know better when i first started out so spending more time on the photography one thing that i that i'll say is look up somebody who you think does great photography again i'm not going to be somebody who says that I'm the, we're the best, because J Jason does almost all of it, that we're the best sneaker photographers in the world, but I did it all before, before I had Jason to help me out, and I think Jason is absolutely freaking phenomenal at sneaker photography, and uh, I think that I at least know my way around the camera too, and so if you think that we're good at it, because of course, I'm confident enough, enough to say that I think that we're great at it. Look at the photos that we take and, and then try to recreate those and see why things are certain ways. How are our photos different from your photos? And even if you say, hey, I don't, li I don't like your photos to Jesus, you, you, you toot your own horn too much. Whatever you think the case may be, find somebody who you think does great photography, great product, product photography, and look at uh, and try to recreate their stuff. And look at what big, big brands with a lot of money are doing. Look at like what Adidas is doing. Look at you know, what Nike is doing for their product photos and things like that. And okay, now how do I recreate that? Because they have budgets, they have teams and, and dollars spent put into their photography and their media team and things like that. And how are they portraying their product to the world? And I'm always just going to say, custom sneakers are, are a premium product. It's something that you're trying to charge a lot of money for. You need to have premium photography. You just have to. You know what I mean? So, and then you followed up here with, I uh, saw another question from you. Let me see. Where was it? Uh... It was, I have a lot of followers, but I don't get a lot of likes. Any tips? Try to create potentially some uh, more engaging posts, like a ask leading questions such as like, what do you, you know, what do you think? Would, do you like this shoe more blue? Do you like, should I have done this green? Ask a question so that people have a reason to comment. Otherwise, you're just hoping that they comment and say that they like it or how much for my own. Sometimes asking a leading question such as like, what do you think of this photo or what do you, th you know, e even asking, what do you think about these shoes? What do you think of this design? If you ask a question, sometimes they're going to read the caption and, and respond to it. So that's something that can create more engagement and things like that. But clean work, buddy. Keep it up. Just spend more time on the photography. Something I will say to anybody. And again, thank you. Thank you for your service. So, all right, but all right, guys, we will answer one more question and we'll call it a day. We'll call it a day. But that will be it for checking out the Instagrams for today. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Jelky Gaelic says, do you have any idea how I can get the attention of bigger influencers? So um, everybody has a virtual mailbox. Reach out to them. Send them a DM, whether it be on Instagram, TikTok, anything like that. Um, and sometimes, you know, they may not check their uh, Instagram DMs or, or whatever the case may be. So comment on their photos and say, hey, I sent you a DM. Check it out when you get a chance or something like that. Try to frame it in a way so that you don't look like a bot account. But sometimes they might look at their notifications that shows their comments more than they look at their uh, Instagram DMs that may have 99 plus requests or whatever. And then they might click your page, click message and see what you said to them. So that would be a way to uh, reach out to them. Okay, we got one more super chat here. Um, this will be the last one, guys. Uh, but since it's a super chat, thank you, Dylan. I appreciate that. So, of course, I don't want to leave you hanging. So let's check that out. It says, I just posted my first custom on Instagram. Can you tell me how I did and what I need to work on? Okay, so this is going to be our last thing of the day, guys. Uh, custom.souls.plug. Check the story. Go on, post a lot of stuff. Okay, so you got a lot of people... Look at this. You got a lot of support for people to check out your page. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. That's cool. So look at that. Look at the, you got like 10 people supporting you to, to check you out. And now you already have uh, 40 followers. I would say um, build out the bio a little bit more. All you have right now is DM me for a custom. Tell me a little bit more about uh, Dylan, whether it be your location, what else you're into, what separates you from every other uh, custom person out there. So we take a look at these Cause Air Force Ones. I love Cause, one of my favorite artists. Um, so uh, 
photography, just taken indoors, whether it be on your kitchen table, it looks like I see the kitchen, um, kitchen stools or chairs in the background on the, on the marble table. Um, Cause is a, is a phenomenal high-end artist. So when you do that artwork, you, you're going to want to achieve that level with the photography. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say what I always say, spend a little bit more time on the photography. The artwork is cool. The artwork is cool. Um, uh, you got, of course, the, the cause toys or dolls with the little X's on the heel tab, on the little lower back heels. I like that. I think that if I just try to take a look at the consistency of, you know, your line work where it says Nike and cause and all the little X's, it looks pretty consistent. I like here on the post that you have multiple shots. So you kind of got this nice main shot, um, another sort of a main shot, and then you have a video. So that's cool stuff. Maybe another of uh, just a real close up on the details that could really help you. And again, like just something like this, like cause is a street artist. So you can just get outside I just think that these photos would have been a little bit better just taking them up against, um, um, you know, the concrete or something like that. And again, since this is an overhead, what you can see in the photo is you standing above the photo like this. And now if I look right here, I can see your shadow. You know what I mean? Whereas if I look at the on the left side of the shoe here, it's obviously well lit. And then as we look towards the toe boxes of both shoes, that's where we can see your shadow standing over them. So... Congratulations on your first pair. Phenomenal stuff. I love cause. I, I like that. I haven't seen, uh, this is a design that I, I, I've i obviously seen a ton of cause artwork in the past, but you know, you didn't just copy everybody else's way of doing cause. So that's cool stuff. Congratulations on the first pair. You did your own thing. I like the cause and Nike on the uh, swoosh, the little X's in the back, the two big dolls being uh there covering up the swishes cool design keep going that's the most important thing all of the photography all of that stuff all of that will come with time but the first and most important thing is just starting and just experimenting with different things testing out and learning from your mistakes whether it be the photography or learning from your painting mistakes things like that everything can come with improvement over time but just taking that leap to start and try to try to build out is uh, the most important thing. We'll like here. Whoops. We'll, we'll drop a comment too. Why not? Cool stuff. Good stuff, buddy. So yeah, um, cool stuff here. Looking forward to seeing what else you're able to cook up in the future. So thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of DCF Live. Truly appreciate all of you guys tuning in. Again, I talked about this almost two hours ago now at the beginning of this stream. But if all goes well... Um, we should be having a stream next week where we paint an entire shoe from start to finish. So I am very excited about that. There's a 95% chance of that happening, likely, as long as everything goes well. Jason and I are on the same page about our days and whatnot. We should be able to do that. That'll probably start at about 8 o'clock in the morning, Central Standard Time, and then go to about 6 o'clock at night. It'll probably take me about 10 hours to do this pair Hopefully I'm able to complete them in one day because I really want to have an entire stream dedicated of a, of a start to finish type shoe. So cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Truly appreciate it. Make sure you check out that video that we posted this week, how to film yourself, just so you guys, something we talked about at the end of the stream here, getting more content and things like that, you know, filming yourself and the equipment we use, all of that will be of great help to you. So thank you guys again for tuning in and we'll see you guys next week.